and already everybody is lining up to spend their summer vacation in New Hampshire, in Iowa, and that's all people are talking about. And it's not just the talking heads at tables like this, it's the parties themselves. I want to bring in our panel on this because this is driving me nuts. We've got retired Lieutenant Colonel Mark Rosen, veteran of the war in Afghanistan and an executive in the financial services industry. Richard St. Paul, Republican strategist and former vice chair for the National Black Republican Association and our senior political correspondent, Andrew Whitman. And as I said, you folks at home are always part of our conversation as well. Head over to Twitter as well as Facebook and sound off. With this 2016 fever, is this thing too early to already start talking about the next presidential campaign? They'll see some of your comments at the bottom of the screen. My answer already is yes. Um, there's sometimes these touchstones, Mark, where you can just say, you know, this is exhibit A on what's wrong. It's exhibit A, B, and C as to why we don't get things done. When you get rewarded for obstruction, you get rewarded for inaction, and then people are already lining up doing the calculations about who can't we offend, who can we, the only goal, trying to get into the Oval Office. And it, it just is so distressing when you do this every night. With everything going on, the biggest issue they're worrying about is an election more than three years away. Well, there is a uh, vacuum of leadership out there, right? Uh, we, first, let's look at the mirror. Um, media maybe has a, a role and a responsibility in this. Would you agree? Yes, uh, absolutely. The media is, is a, a responsibility to talk about the things that matter, not mirror and pick out the things that are spectacular and sell and, and buy print. But that said, uh, there is a dearth <coughs> of leadership, and it starts at the top. Am I right? So I think if, the president if, bears some responsibility, but it takes two to tango here. Yeah, and, and the truth is there's only one uh, branch of Congress that is controlled by the GOP. They want to control spending and, reduce, and not have taxes go up even further than they did last year. So those are their options. They cannot drive the national agenda. What they can do is uh, try and get the national agenda more in line with their political and ideological perspective. But they the, can't. the national agenda is driven by the president. You know, by the way, the one house of Congress, which but is... But one thing we've learned, Mark, in the last five years is everything factually you said is true, mm -hmm. but you can drive an agenda if you're determined to say no at every turn. And let's just take one issue that Republicans identified was a big problem for them and why they lost in no small part in 2012, at least the White House, and that was the Latino vote. 71% of the Latino bro uh, vote broke for Democrats. The head of the RNC even said, uh, you know, Richard, that it was a big reason. They had to widen their base. They couldn't just have white guys here. They weren't going to win national office yeah. that way. Well, so well, what has happened? Marco Rubio was supposed to child. Right. Democrat, per the request of Republicans, they said, stay out of the way here. If you're in the background, we've got a better chance to get this thing passed. Rubio takes center stage on this thing, gets some Senate Republicans to get behind him and get the Democrats to do a plan. And then he runs into the headwinds for the Republican Party. And literally, in the same day, he does a speech in English where he says one thing and a speech in uh, Spanish where he says something else. And we've got this gridlock, and now he's campaigning on basically, let's shut down the government. I I'm not even about pointing fingers as to whose fault it is. But it is amazing, and such an indictment on Washington right now, that we're already focusing our next best chance is three years from now. Well, speaking of Mark Rubio, he is a contender for a Republican pres presidential bid. The other thing you have to look at when, in 2012, you have to look at either it was the wrong candidate and wrong strategy or wrong strategy. Uh, and that's, exa that's why we don't have a Republican president today. Uh, when you look at the immigration bill, it passed bipartisan. I'm curious. Answer your own question. If it was the wrong messenger and not the message, do you believe I that believe it right was the wrong now, strategy. Okay. And I so, believe it was the wrong strategy. So do you think the lesson's been learned here? I think so, absolutely. And if you look at what the RNC is doing with their growth and opportunity, they're outreaching to uh, Asian, African American, and Latino communities. If you look at the immigration bill, you have uh, the bipartisanship in the Senate. You have the House, although they didn't accept the, uh, the bipartisan bill in, in the Senate, they're passing their own bills in the House to deal with immigration. So they're tackling it one issue at a time. But can I ask so this a is, bigger this is, question? This is though? something Wait, that's going to be tackled. Maybe immigration it's my fault we're happen. taking, and I got into the issues of my, but Andrew, isn't it a bigger thing where, maybe I, I'm looking with rose-colored glasses, but you used to be judged on what you did. And that was either an accomplishment, a credit or a debit, depending on what you got done. Now it seems that people are going out and saying, look at the things that I said no to. 
Look what I put an end to. Not what I did. I didn't get anything done. But look at what um, I said no to. And I'm saying the president, I'm not letting him off the hook completely on this either, okay? Maybe he had a tough uh, hand to play with here, but he could have tried harder, okay? That all said, it's amazing the climate that we're sitting in right now. We're in this vacuum. They're already looking three years ahead. I, I don't remember it being this bad. Well, okay, <clears throat> we would always look ahead, and we, we love the horse race. We love the Iowa stuff. But, but, early. but there's more of a focus on it. It's getting more attention than it otherwise would because... In part, the media is sitting around and saying there's only so much reporting we can do. I, we could come on the air every single night, Mark, and say immigration reform still looks like it's dead in the house. Immigration reform still looks like it's dead in the house. And by the way, immigration reform still looks like it's dead in the house. No. Uh, but you can't keep saying that every single day. Eventually, you start looking for the next story. And I think that's why the spotlight is so big on 2016 well, right now. And it's also a self-replicating process. It's Things are so divisive and so gridlocked in Washington right now that, yes, you can use as a selling point that I voted against this. Or an even better selling point is I've never been to Washington. I'm an outsider, so I can challenge these guys because I can nitpick every single vote that they've done. I mean, but what do you expect when CNN and NBC are are prepared to run a Hillary Clinton miniseries. I mean, you're, you're, and she's the presidential candidate for uh, I selected think for 2016. Biggest, I mean, what do you expect I think us this to talk is about the here? The biggest then? much ado Which I think is over ridiculous. nothing, right? But here, I, I just think nobody asked my opinion. But the president, what I wish he would do is um, not be instead of being so frustrated with the process and the gridlock, which I understand can be frustrating. At least go to the public and sell harder and sell more what you want. Okay, but on the other side, as a party, after everything that went down in 2012, with the opportunity in front of Republicans in this election season, can you get your house in order with a party discipline that you guys were famous for and say, time out? Mitch McConnell, somebody's going to, a Tea Party guy might cost this guy his seat. This is stupid. Let's rally around this instead of running afraid of the Tea Party. If I was these guys, the idea that Rand Paul, for crying out loud, or that Rick Santorum are going to now drive Chris Christie, you know, to the to the far right here is the only way to get elected. Shame on as a party here. What happened to what Reagan had to say? That's where you guys ought to go and get some stuff done. You don't have to just say no to everything. And I'm and again, I'm trying to be agnostic out of this, not just Republican, Democrat, but it's just so dis dispiriting well, that we're already having to look at it the next let's, election season. Let's talk about the future of the Republican Party and who people see as the future Republican Party. It's not Mitch McConnell and it's not John uh, bon Boehner. Uh, uh, don't tell me it's, it's Ted Cruz, it, though. It's, it's Rand Paul, it's Ted Cruz, oh, it's God. Paul Ryan, Richard. but ahead of them all are Chris Christie, who has worked, who is very popular not only among Republicans, but Democrats. Now, the issue for Chris Christie is getting out of a Republican primary. But, you know, the folks you mentioned who are quote-unquote obstructionists aren't looked at as leaders of the future. They're leaders now, but not in the future. And that's why I think people but are looking the towards 2016. On the I, 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 right I don't now. understand why you're focused on the Republican Party being obstructionist. The Senate is controlled by the Democratic Party. There so they passed immigration. There is a Democratic, okay, they pass there's a Democratic president. What? They don't apply any leadership. The president should walk down Pennsylvania Avenue, go up there and talk to the congresspersons, senators, representatives, and actually talk with credibility okay, okay, and, and not pull the rug from under the negotiations, yeah. which the they do every wait, wait, single and, and time. Time out. Wait, wait, wait. That's not fair. Congress. That's not fair. Take immigration, an issue you guys talked about. The president, and this has been widely reported, was asked by Republican leadership. They said, listen, we want this as much as you do because we got to get Latino vote the next election. Please stay in the background on this and let us take the lead on. He let Marco Rubio get credit for what they passed through. It was not the bill that the Democrats wanted. They held their nose and they said, fine. As soon as it gets through, before it even gets to the House for even an opportunity to get voted on, Boehner, because he wants to keep a job, says, this is DOA. We're not even going to look at this. And then all of a sudden, Marco Rubio starts speaking Spanish and saying something else. So how is it the president's fault on a signature issue that would benefit both parties, and I argue Republicans even more, how, how is it his fault on this one? I'm saying a pox on everybody, but how is that the president's in the fault? House, that's false. Immigration in the House is not dead. Boehner said we're going to take it step by step. For example, the Dream, the Dream Act, where people who came here under the age of 16, their parents brought them here illegally, mm -hmm. the House is likely to take something like that What did up. Stephen King say, by the way? I don't know. Oh, I'll, I'll remind you. He was, okay. and how about the quote exec? And he's part of Republican leadership. It was for House. every one Dream Act valedictorian, there were 100 immigrants with calves the size of cantaloupes who are like drug basically mules. drug muling marijuana across the desert. All right, well, some moronic uh, we I wouldn't even pay attention. Points. Exactly. Moronic I wouldn't points. even pay attention to that. that yeah. uh, immigration is a thorny issue. What about the economy? 
All right. What about gun control? The, what, what about remem gun control? Remember gun control? It was the, the centerpiece for the first quarter and of this year. Do? What did he do? No, he where was the president? The four, he sheared back the four things to get to one, which is background checks. But, but he didn't apply any leadership. It was Marketing. all demagoguery and, 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 and um, PR sound bites. There was no real talking to negotiation and negotiations with uh, legislators. And but so Mark, even you know, on the jobs about Mark, you know it's not the military. He's got to actually got buy-in here from both chambers. And the idea that it's that he tried to drive some crazy bargain. The public was with him on all four of this, from the assault weapons, the ammo, because all he tried to do was background checks. I can do the numbers we call come home about how the NRA members even want it. He couldn't even get it up for a floor vote. Yeah. Well, and, and how is that his fault? He's not the first, per, first president to, to, to have to work with a Congress. How, how, was this Bill kind Clinton, of Congress? how was Bill Clinton able to work with Republican Thank Congress? You. Thank that you. Did he have a different it's possible. Time out. Did you he have a different set of actors? He had he had a better strategy. That's what he had. But but Richard, even while Clinton was being impeached by Republicans in in the House, there were still enough Republicans who were concerned about doing the nation's business that they could come together and no, do a deal and it, get some reforms it, it done. It was Clinton's and, and, strategy and, 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 that helped. It wasn't. It wasn't anything Because else. at the same time that they impeached him, he was able to have a balanced budget and actually right. put us in surplus. He knew how to work with Congress. He actually met with Congress. Uh, President Obama should try much. that. I'm Thank no you. less, I'm no less I, I am just as <laughs> pessimistic as I was when we started the show here 15 minutes ago. It's a bad spot, and I think all of us can agree, whatever the politics that we come to the table with, they can do better than this. All right, when we come back, we're going to be talking about an issue. We, know we talked about, about domestic surveillance a lot on the show, but... This is a specific thing here, and if you want an example, it's not just big government, but the idea of major industry looking in at you, and maybe this debate, it's already done before it even got started. Your TV watching you instead of the other way around, this isn't some bad Tom Cruise sci-fi movie, this is real. We'll tell you about how this almost went down and just how close we are to that kind of an America. Stay with us.